Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 113 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Okay, before I get to today's video, I first want to mention a comic book that I've backed, and I strongly encourage you to do the same, and that is Jack Iron Steel Cowboy Part 3. There is less than 16 hours left in its campaign, so you need to back it quickly. Um, it is closing in on its $10,000 goal. It's at 81% as of the uploading of this video, so uh, get on it as quickly as you can. Issues 1 and 2 were really good. You can purchase those along with issue 3 if you missed them the first time. Now, its creator, Cody Fernandez, will probably relaunch this campaign if he doesn't reach his goal, but my friends... I don't want to wait that long, and I don't think you do either. So let's get it funded now, today, so we can enjoy it as soon as possible. The link uh, to its Indiegogo campaign is in the description below, and you should go and back it right now if you can. Also in the description below is the link to my comic book, Tilt. At present, I am only $21 away from reaching the halfway point of my goal. Who will be the one to get me over the hump? I hope it is you. And also, I had a gent that uh, goes by the Twitter handle Brainiac420 do a short YouTube promo for Tilt. If you haven't seen that yet, well, let me share it with you now. Hey kids, it's Nacho Man Bulk Rogan. Do you want mobsters, murder, and women in tight spandex? <laughs> then today's your lucky day. From Hogwild Comic, it's Tilt. What if you were Jennifer Poehler and mobsters were out to get you? Would you want the power to make kings, queens, and jacks in a deck of cards come alive to kick some ass? Of course you would! But what if the price of that power was killing the mobsters who murdered your dad? Could you do it? And more importantly, can Jennifer? Find out what happens to this sexy woman in danger and rush over to the Indiegogo! It's time to get tilted! Brainiac 420 is available for hire, and his price is an unbelievably low $20. I had to provide him with a script and some images, and he did the rest. Put it together, did the voice, all of that. A great job at an amazing price. And the best way to reach him is through his Twitter handle. Okay, let's move on. A leverage buyout. Is that the future of comics? Maybe. Now, I don't need to spend much time telling you how bad the comic book industry is right now. Uh, if you don't already know, there are tons of videos uh, out there that go into it. Suffice to say, it was an industry in bad shape, and all it needed was a crisis like the coronavirus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the police state. Um, sorry, COVID-19 to send it into a tailspin. And even if the retailers, the comic book stores, reopen in a matter of a few weeks, that's no guarantee that the industry will bounce back. Right now, uh, customers who are marginally attached to comics, that is, they... They aren't committed to comics, and it doesn't take much to get them into a different hobby, whether it's video games or card games or whatever. Uh, the comic industry is losing them daily right now because, um, you know, there are no new comics. Generally, marginal consumers are only about 5 to 15 percent of a market. And that may not seem like much, but if you are in, indi in an industry with pretty thin profit margins, you know, ones in the low single digits, those consumers can be the difference between life and death. So what follows is both my prediction and I think it's fair to say my projection. That is, I'm proje projecting some, and you'll see why in a bit. First, what is a leverage buyout? Basically, it's when an investment firm buys out a company with a combination of equity and debt. And in a lot of cases, it happens when a company is in bad shape and the investment firm hopes that it can return the company to profitability, you know, turn it around. And then what they'll do is they'll sell it off in a few, a few years later when that company has, you know, if it's been turned around um, and it has more value, they'll sell it off and make uh, money on it that way. 
But what if what if the company fails? What does the investment firm do then? Well, uh, going into the deal, the investment firm uh, uses the um, uh, company's assets to serve as collateral. So if the company does fail, the investment firm can then sell off those assets and recoup some of its money. Um, this is some of what Bain Capital did and still does. Now, what is Bain Capital? Um, it was the firm that Mitt Romney ran for a long time. And this was used against him in the 2012 election because some of the companies that Bain took over uh, did ultimately fail and the workers were let go. Um, his opponents made a big deal out of that, and fair or not, well, it made for effective political commercials because, of course, otherwise Romney probably would have won since he was such a great candidate. <laughs> Corporation! Corporation! Anyway, I could see this happening to companies like Marvel and DC. Investment firms take them over in a leveraged buyout, knowing that if they can't get them back to profitability, then they can close them down and sell off intellectual properties like Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, Hulk, Flash, all the stuff that still does sell fairly well. But in the meantime, uh, these firms will try to turn things around. And the first thing they're going to look at is what indeed sells. Spider-Man sells. Batman sells. Marvel Rising, Miss Marvel, Fearless, not so much, so discontinued. You know, Green Lantern sells, but not when it's called Far Sector, so that one's gone too. Oh, you've rebooted Captain Marvel nine times and it can't sell? Not bringing it back for a tenth. And they won't just look at titles, they'll look at creators. G. Willow Wilson, go do something else. What do you mean Captain America is selling poorly? What was different when it sold well? Okay, ta Coates, go back to the Atlantic Monthly. Uh, Joshua Williamson, keep him. Mark Wade, your old stuff uh, sold fine, your recent stuff not so much, and well, no one likes you anyways. Uh, same with Gail Simone. You want to do more like your recent Wonder Woman run? No. You want to do more like Seven Days? Hey, great. Here's some incentive. <coughs> Heather Antos, go get some experience in customer service first. Hi, how you doing today? Can you bet you got the white or the dark chicken? And here is where I'm probably really getting into projection. But once the investment firms get these comic book companies on sound footing, assuming that that they're able to, uh, they are going to want to find ways to increase uh, their value so that they can sell them in a few years. You know, again, that's where you know, in firms that do leverage buyouts make a big chunk of their money. So they'll be trying to find what sells, uh, not just within their own companies, but they'll be looking outside. And, you know, perhaps they'll see a lot of these comic skate pros do very well in Indiegogo. Uh, if it sells well there, maybe it can sell well as part of a big, you know, chain kind of thing. Let's see if people like Ethan Van Skyver, John Malin, Cecil, etc. will work with us. Now, uh, that is definitely some projecting on my part, and there's also the question of would those guys be willing to work with main, mainstream comics? Right now, I doubt that they would, but, you know, who knows? If the industry makes some serious changes, maybe attitudes toward it will change as well. So I'll just finish by, by saying I think that's kind of a hopeful scenario. Uh, you know, firms that specialize in leverage buyouts come in. They get rid of uh, a lot of the dreck uh, in the comic book industry, which means a lot of the SJWs are gone. And maybe it eventually starts bringing the comic book industry back to what made it so great at one time. Anyway, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day.